All right, quick update for you guys. So this is actually one of the offices that I rent and that I then sublet to IT companies in need of flexible office solutions. And that's pretty much what pays for the whole drone building initiative as well as the YouTube channel and all the investments I've made so far. And the somewhat cool thing is that one of my customers, the clients in this room, actually vacated the office temporarily. And that means that I get to finally use it. And so I can use this room and there is one obvious problem that everything is still a mess because again, their stuff is here as they will eventually come back. Uh, but I need to do some rearranging because now I need to turn this into a drone manufacturing room as well as a YouTube studio as well as an office that we can work in, right? So it's gonna be a fun one. All right, so I honestly have no idea how to set this up because we have a lot of stuff. All right, it's day number two. It's time to tame the chaos. setup is complete. This is the main organizer. It houses most of the components we need. Here we have some of the most common tools that we use and our glues. This is where the magic happens. And then here I have this rack of all of the other things that we need. And the last and most important bit is you. I think we're ready, guys. A big welcome from a new workspace. Now let's fix the Super Stingray. Last time we had an issue where the motor was rotating around the carbon tube because the tube is very glossy. The proper way to do this would be to drill a hole through both the carbon tube and the mount so that I can add a screw that would prevent it from rotating. But that would mean removing the wires from inside, which is honestly going to be a pain. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to strip away some of the gloss to glue the mount onto the carbon tube. While not ideal, this will work. Now I'm pretty sure that this motor mount isn't going anywhere, so let's do the other three ones. Yeah. Alright, so I securely mounted all of the motor mounts, I glued them in place. Uh, so everything should be good now. Let's plug in the battery. This is always a bit of an exercise because this battery pack is just massive. ESCs are on. Okay, so this seems to be fly by wire. The ailerons are working properly. We don't have the GPS installed, which is something I should have done. I mounted the GPS. All right, it says we're not ready for flight. Uh, bad fix for the GPS. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. They do need calibration, but this GPS is broken, so let me arm it either way. Let's arm. It says compass not healthy. Right, so I'll open mission planner, because there we can force arm it and bypass this issue, because this GPS is broken. We are connected. Now let's force arm.
Hey guys, exciting news. This just arrived and this is a GPS because for this drone, I had a perfectly good Matic m 10 q GPS and then I touched it with the solder and destroyed one of the capacitors, rendering it pretty much trash. So this is the unit. It's the same m 10 q unit, but it's made by Foxer. It's a bit bigger, to be honest, than the Matic, so I'm curious to how it would perform. status update so we just tried to do the second cover test and it initially it worked flawlessly as the aircraft lifted off the ground and it was super stable you can see that in the video but then for some reason it decided to just go full throttle and go all the way up and at the same time I'm pushing the stick backwards and it keeps climbing so at that point I'm like okay another drone lost it would, that would be my third crash and then I started switching the buttons, I think I went into return to home and it was slowly dropping down in order to come back home, which actually saved the drone. And then I noticed that one of the carbon rods that holds the motors, it tilted slightly. So that's something I should fix. And also because of the previous harsh landing, it seems like the bearing on one of the motors was broken. And now it just, I mean, the motor pretty much overheated and uh, yeah, the bearing is gone, so I don't have another motor. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do another test, which is unfortunate, but the drone survived. All we need to do is change the motor and keep trying. And this is my little brother who's helping me film today's episode. Right, hey guys, we are back at the beautiful dam of Zaponia, and we're going to do a stress test today. Center of gravity is good. It also seems like we have GPS signal. I'm just going to double check here because we have a telemetry radio. All right, so now we are ready to fly. We have good GPS link and we are connected with the RC. My heart is pounding already because, <laughs> I mean, yeah, let's, let's just go for it. All right, we are in the air. Right, everything is looking good. So let's see whether we have some issues with the motors. I would call this a success, which is exciting. Um, it seems that one of the front motors is overheating a lot more than the others. 
And now it seems like it's because the center of gravity is way forward. So the front motors are working a lot more than the rear ones. Uh, but even still, the right motor seems to be way hotter than the left one, which is interesting. Now let's see how much energy we used. And it's about 6% uh, or about 500 milliamps just for this small hover. We can do another test. Yeah, the front motors are hot and I would say they're about equally hot. The rear motors are rather cool, which is good. Stabilization was on point this time because I think we have enough GPS fixes. It was just staying completely at the same level, which was incredible. Now, structurally, we do have a twist on one of the VTOL arms. Now, this is something I would have to figure out a more permanent, permanent solution to. But other than that, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm happy with the results. And the other reason I'm hesitant to keep the hover longer is because I think that PETG, I mean, it's a good material, but I'm not sure it can withstand the heat from the motors. And if it starts getting soft, we can have a catastrophic crash which is not something I want to do. So the motor parts, I'm going to print out of nylon and then we should be good. Right, so now I'm going to reinforce the points of failure and then tomorrow or later today, we are going to do an autonomous mission. It depends on whether it will rain. You know my experience with autonomous missions, but now I kind of know what I'm doing and I have a simulation software where I can test the mission virtually before I try it on the real aircraft.